If you go out and farm herbs or ore for an hour, and then sell those mats on the auction house, that does not mean you got free gold. This is the most common misconception I hear when people talk about how they make gold, or the best ways to make gold. But first, let me get into a little background information to set this point up. You see, my first ever foray into creating content for the WoW community was not in making videos for YouTube like I do now. It was actually a gold-making blog. I was obsessed with gold-making blogs and seeing all the new and unique ways you could make gold in WoW. And I thought I had some techniques I could add to the community. I used to make gold in WoW like it was my second job. In fact, I remember one day skipping classes in college because I wanted to get home quicker on Tuesday so I could repost my auctions. Because Tuesdays are by far the best days to make gold on. All this to say, I'm very well informed when it comes to gold making. And in being well informed, I also know all of the rookie mistakes that people make. And the most common one, in fact it was a meme in the gold making community, was the, I farmed it so it's free. Now let me actually get into why this statement might not be correct. You see, unless you don't value your time, then farming is still not free. Because I know some people would counter this point with, I just do it in my free time, so it's not like I'm wasting my time. Which is not a very good defense. Even if you don't value your time, that doesn't mean all of a sudden you get more time than everyone else. Because you see, the time you spent farming could have been spent on other high gold making ventures. If you farmed ore for 3 hours and get enough to sell for like 45k, that's great. But what if you only have 10 minutes of free time tomorrow? What if instead of farming ore for 3 hours, you leveled up jewel crafting, enchanting, or alchemy instead? What if you spent those 3 hours learning how to set up auction groups and trade skill master? What if those 3 hours were spent prospecting ore and crafting rings and necklaces to disenchant? What if those 3 hours were spent leveling up an alt to have another alchemy cooldown set up? And so on and so on. You can see that even people who don't value their time could still use that time in more productive gold making ways. So those 3 hours you spent farming ore to make 45,000 gold was 3 hours that could have been spent doing something else that could contribute to higher gold yields down the line. Which means you didn't get it for free, and instead chose to farm with your time. It seems like I'm splitting hairs on that distinction, but you'd be surprised. I've seen many people justify posting items well below market value because they farm the mats themselves, and consider those mats free. No, they weren't free you used valuable time to get those mats, and are underselling your items under an incorrect assumption, and just straight up making less gold than you could be. Sure, you might make more in one day if you do nothing but farm when compared to setting up professions and auction house add-ons, but after all the initial setup is done, you can make more gold for less time put into the game, with setup rather than pure farming. Let's use jewel crafting as an example. To first get started in jewel crafting, you want to first max out the profession and learn all the high value crafts. This requires market research, which takes time. Then after doing market research, you have to do the groundwork. Finishing the Legion jewel crafting questline, get the rank 3 recipes for your crafts. Which thankfully for jewel crafting isn't as important as other professions. Then you need to get your gems to craft, which requires buying and prospecting ore but make sure you only buy ore if it's around market value, which again requires market research. Then after making the gems, you need to set up your auction house add-on, which will automatically search the auction house for the lowest price and undercut it by one copper. Which entail requires learning how to set up the add-on trade skill master, which is not user friendly I might add, so you're going to need to look up guides on it and tutorials. Then, after you get your auction sorted out, you want to sort out your crafting options in the add-on, which will automatically check the auction house in your bags for the gems you want to sell, and tell you how many you need to craft, and even just do it for you, as long as you're on your jewel crafter and have the materials. And lastly, set up the add-on to automatically send all your gems to your banking alt, 
who sits in major cities and does nothing but sell stuff on the auction house. And then, once you have all the initial setup done, you're pretty much on easy street now. You just log onto your bank tune once a day and run an auto cancel scan to cancel all your auctions that have been undercut. Then do a post scan to repost them to undercut the competition. Then you do a crafting queue, which will tell you which gems you need to craft, and then check the auction house for ore that might be cheap. Then you log onto your tune, who is your jewel crafter, and just do the crafts and mail them to your banking alt and post them. This whole process takes less than 10 minutes and allows you to make more gold in less time than farming ore for 10 minutes a day. And if you never bothered to do this initial setup, and only farmed ore non-stop, you won't make any gold on the days that you can't spend farming, since you only get out of it what you put into it. While with the auction house method I described earlier, even if you miss a day of posting, you'll still be making gold with auction selling. And then you can just repeat the above JC example for enchanting alchemy and inscription to make even more gold. But you might ask, what if you already have all your profession set up. Isn't it then more valuable to go out and farm? And the answer to that is yes, actually. But that's the whole part of the value your time thing. You did value your time and spent the time needed to set up your auction house venues. Now you get to decide what to do with your time next. Will you make more gold going out into the world and farming mats? Or maybe try to farm a rare recipe, pet, or mount that you can sell. After all, farming doesn't mean just going out and mining, herbing, or skinning. But then there are other things you can do with that time, like look into other passive gold making ventures, crafting necklaces and rings and disenchant for enchanting materials, doing Blood of Sargeras world quests on your crafting alts because a lot of the high gold yielding crafts require them, and you can't just buy them on the auction house. Maybe trying to find a personal farmer who sells you ore and herbs directly. Sniping the auction house for items that sell for a lot, but people post for very little. Basic buying low and reselling high. There are still so many other things you could do with your time that farming is still not considered free and instead is a conscious choice of, I'm going to farm today instead of doing other stuff because I want to turn off my brain and make gold for a bit. That all being said, there are times in which farming is actually more valuable than messing with all the other stuff I mentioned. At the start of new expansions, new crafting mats like ore, herbs, and skins, and other enchanting materials sell for the most that they ever will in that expansion's life cycle. So it's actually a better use of your time to just farm mats and sell them wholesale for a few weeks to a month. Also after patches that include new mats and crafts, like Argus did. So, while I do rail against farming and how it's not free, there are points in time when farming is just straight up the best option for making gold. In which case, I still don't think it's free and more like you're taking advantage of market trends. Of course, there is one more thing I'd like to mention. Sometimes, people will use the farming means I got it for free argument when selling crafted materials. Say for example, the cheap to make enchant, Enchant Gloves Legion Herbalism, which just allows you to enchant gloves to pick herbs faster. The enchant only requires one Ley Light Shard to make, and the enchant is in decently high demand as it sells well. One Ley Light Shard usually sells for around 75 gold, so the enchant can sell for only 80 gold to make a profit. A small profit, but a profit nonetheless. If you happen to get a blue item from a quest and disenchant it for one Leylight Shard, don't then craft a glove enchant and sell it for 50 gold, because you got it for free. Instead, post it at normal market price for around 80 gold. Just because you didn't have to pay anything to get it, that doesn't mean it's somehow worth less to the rest of the world now. And you should still treat it as if it's worth 75 gold, and post it for a profit based on that. I've seen people in the past just hoard their mats all expansion and then dump them on the auction house for well below market value just because they want to get rid of them all. Which I mean is a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Not everyone is interested in making the most from what they've got. Just because you don't value the mats doesn't mean they have no value though. In which case just dumping mats below market price should be more of a conscious decision 
of I don't mind losing money on these as it saves me time of not trying to maximize my profits and not, oh look at all this free gold I just got. And I think that's it. Those are usually the only instances in which people use the argument of I farmed it so it's free. When people go out and farm mats for gold and when people come into materials and sell them well below market value. And I hope you learned a little today about valuing your time. You only have so many hours in the day to do stuff. So even if you don't value that time, that doesn't diminish the value of the time itself.